Hey, thank you for joining me for our Wednesday study this week. Uh, I, I want you to know that I'm praying for you. I'm praying for everyone in our church and in our community and in our nation. I know with all the things that are happening right now, it can become almost overbearing. And we can get very discouraged and even depressed if we're not careful. But we as Christians should never look at depression as a place where we are headed because we find our hope in Jesus Christ. And even though the world is changing rapidly and things are, are looking so negative most of the time in the United States right now, Christ does not change. The Bible assures us that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to look with you at a passage today found in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And it's basically Paul challenging the Christians in Colossae to live a Christian life no matter the circumstances around them. That is exactly what we need to hear as Christians today. We have to continue to let our faith be strong in our Lord no matter the circumstances. So let's begin with prayer and then we'll look at our passage. Father, guide us today as we look at Colossians 3, 1 through 4, and help us, Lord, to hear the truths that you have there, even as you had Paul share those truths with the Christians in Colossae. Lord, we find ourselves in a very difficult time, and Father, if we focus on the things around us, it'll be so easy to get discouraged and even depressed. But Father, help us to learn in this passage today that we need to keep our eyes focused on Christ. So guide us as we study, for it's in your name. Amen. Beginning in Colossians 3, 1, it says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. In this verse it says that we are to set our hearts on things above. I want you to pause and ask yourself a question right now. What is your heart's desire right at this very moment? What is the thing that is so heavy on your heart or weighing on your heart? What is the focus right now? For us as Christians, our focus should always be on things above, always on Christ. If we have our heart's desire focused on the things in this world, then it's going to lead us to discouragement. It's going to lead us to depression. We cannot allow ourselves as Christians to get caught up and the trap that the devil puts there for us to pull us away from Christ. We have to keep our heart focused on Christ. So let me ask you again, what is your heart's desire? I pray that your heart is focused on things above. It goes on to challenge us even more in verse 2, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Not only does it tell us to set our hearts on things above, but to also set our minds on things above. So it's talking about our souls being focused on things above, and it's talking about our intellect being focused on things above. Right now in this world, if we let the news get to us, if we just focus on the things of this news, and I'm someone that's guilty of that, it can eat you up alive, and it can get you so discouraged and so off kilter with your relationship with Christ. That is why we cannot let our minds get focused on the things of this world. We have to keep our minds focused on the things of God. You say, but pastor, I need to know what's going on around me. I agree with that. You do, but filter it through Jesus Christ. And you'll see in him that these things are temporary, that he still has control of these things, and none of these things are a surprise to him. He's going to work it all out according to his purpose to bring about his will for mankind. So we just have to pause and we have to trust and we have to keep our minds focused on the things above. Verse 3 tells us, For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Again, what Paul is telling us as Christians, we should not be the same person we used to be before we knew Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. For a person that does not know Jesus, their hearts and their minds are focused on the things of this world. They have nothing else to put their focus on. But when you come to know Jesus Christ, then your focus changes. 
you can then place your heart and your mind focused on Christ and focused on eternity, on what is yet to come. Uh, so for Christians especially, we've got to understand that we cannot get trapped in the things that this world has to throw at us. The devil wants to get us discouraged. The devil wants to get us depressed. When we're discouraged and depressed, then we're not letting God's light shine through us to others around us. And others cannot see Jesus in us as readily when we're letting the things of this world be our focus. But if we keep our focus and on Jesus Christ by our hearts and our minds, then others can see Jesus in us and others can come to know the truth and know him as their Savior and Lord. In the last verse that we're going to look at today in verse 4, it says, When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Boy, that first part of the verse really hit, can hit you in the face. When Christ, who is your life, can you honestly sit there and say this morning that Christ is your life? If I were to ask you the question, blank is my life, what would you put in that blank? For some of you, you would put, my family is my life. You would put, my wife, my child, whoever it may be, is my life. Some of you might even say, my job is my life. Uh, there are many things that you might fill in that blank. But for as Christians, there's only one correct answer to that question. And that is that Christ is has to be your life. That means that everything starts with him and goes from there. If we start with Christ in our families, then our families will be the best that they can be. We will be the best we can be for our family. And Christ's love will be evident to all around us in our family. If our job is that important to us, if we start with Christ, then we're going to put forth our best effort because our best efforts bring glory to our Heavenly Father. So we have to remember that Christ should be our life, and then everything else falls into place after that. I was taught years ago, even in Sunday school growing up as a child, that it's always Christ first, family second, others third, and everything else follows after that. And I still try to practice that in my life today. Our ultimate goal it says here, if Christ is your life, is that then you will also appear with him in glory. Now, for some of us, we're approaching the age of retirement or might already be a retired age. And what the goal sometimes be to becomes is how are we going to retire? Where are we going to retire? How we are we going to retire comfortably? And we get our, fo our focus on that goal. Our goal should always be our eternity with Christ. It says, we will also appear with him in glory. So our goal should always be to think of what eternity is. That is our ultimate goal. Yes, I do have to retire one day. And yes, Cindy and I, Cindy and I will have to decide where we want to live. But that's a temporary thing. It doesn't matter where we really end up living because our ultimate eternal home is going to be with Christ in heaven. And that is our goal, to be in glory with him. Now, unfortunately, again, as Christians, we have to realize that we are taking our eyes off the goal. Paul said that he keeps his eyes on the goal so he can win the prize. We have to keep our eyes on Christ and our goal is to be with him in eternity, in glory. Christians, where is your focus today? Where are you focusing your eyes? Are you focusing on things of this world? If you are, you're missing the mark. And you're not keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. There's a term that we use today that Christians become worldly. The term originates from this very thought that we get our eyes focused on the things of this world. And when we do that, we miss out on keeping our eyes on the things that Christ would have us to focus on in our lives. You see, he created each and every one of us for a purpose. And we are to fulfill that purpose while we're on this earth. But if we're not focused on him, we can't fulfill that purpose because we don't know that purpose. But if we keep our eyes on Christ and our goal is eternity with him in glory, 
then he will fulfill his purpose in us on this earth and we will bring glory th to him with our lives. And that should be what we want to do. So I challenge you today, we must keep our eyes on Christ as we look forward to being with him in glory. For all of us, we need to take our focus off the things of this world. I'm challenging myself with that today. I get so caught up in the news. I get so caught up on the things that people post on Facebook. And I get so caught up on things I read in the paper. I have got to get my focus, focus completely on Jesus Christ and filter everything through that so that I can keep my eyes on the goal, which is eternity in glory with Jesus Christ. When we are completely focused on Christ, then we can handle anything and everything that this world throws at us. There's nothing the devil can throw at us that we can't overcome when we keep our eyes focused on Christ. Would you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you today for this passage. Thank you for challenging the Christians in Colossae and preserving this word for us today to challenge us. Lord, you knew what would happen 2,000 years down the road, and you knew how, that we as Christians would be so compromised today by the things of this world to take our eyes off of Jesus and focus on the things that are going on around us now. But Father, we can't do that. We have to keep our eyes focused on Christ. And then you will work everything out in our lives according to your will. So Father, help us to trust you. Help us to focus on Christ. And help us to keep our eyes on the, on the goal, which is eternity with Christ in glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, we're not having car church this Sunday because of July 4th weekend. You can watch it online that morning and on all of our different websites. And I uh, hope you see you again on July 12th for car church as we continue outside. And we're moving the time to 9 a.m. because of the heat. So come and join us on July 12th here in our, our parking lot. And then join us online this Sunday uh, for our service on Sunday morning. Thank you.